Welcome to the Transform Your Wealth and Health Podcast, where experts in wealth, health, and fitness help transform your life. Here's your host, Andy Arder. We have a guest today that's an internationally known speaker, the author of the book, Wow Your Way to Wealth, a branding expert and an incredibly inspiring character too. Amazingly, that's all the same person. It's Vishal Majaria. Thank you for having me, Andy, and I love your short but powerful introduction. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Vishal, could you tell us about your early life, please? I know you've got a wonderful story to tell. Sure. So I was born into a family where they didn't have much money and so I didn't have much money and so I was really broke growing up and I would be given the hand-me-down clothes from friends and family and so I was in a state of western poverty throughout my life I thought to myself what am I going to do with my life and being a rebel at school at the age of 13 something happened that made me realize that I don't want to struggle I don't want to follow the path that my parents were following not because it was their fault but because they didn't know any different. And so at that point, when this really difficult struggle happened, and it was my first episode of mental health, I realized I wanted to make something of my life. And I said to myself, I'm going to go from being a rebel in school to being one of the hardest working students in school, because I want to make something of my life. And so I actually did that. And for four years throughout my secondary education and my college education, I was probably one of the hardest working students at school but there was a slight problem with that and that problem was was that I was only getting average and just above average results so I went from complete failure to getting average to just above average results but I thought to myself I deserve more than this and so I got fed up and dropped out of college and then I said to myself that I'm going to do something different so I joined a basketball academy which was great. I learned so much. I wasn't getting paid to play, but they were covering my basic expenses and my living accommodation. Whilst I was studying, I had a part-time job, training 10 to 16 hours a week. It was really intense. A bit like a semi-pro? You, you must have been quite good. I was all right. I wouldn't say I was that good, but I was okay. And then at the end of that, I didn't really have any direction. So I moved back home and I got a job in the bank. And I said to myself, I'm not going to stay here for very long, but I'll stay as long as I can and I'll save up some money so I can do something that I really want to do. Uh And after about 10 months, I said, I've had enough of this place. I've saved up a little bit of money. I'm going to go ahead and help people. And the method I thought I would use was fitness, health and fitness, because I was always active and I enjoyed that. So I took up a three-month intensive course, moved away from home for three months, and did that course and said to myself, great, I've got this qualification, now what? And so I I thought, I don't have the confidence and the know-how to start a business as a personal trainer, so what I'll do is I'll work in a gym and just get the experience. So I did that, got the experience. After a year, the company said, I'm sorry, we don't have any more positions for you, and so you have to make a decision as to what you want to do. You can either leave, and I was working at David Lloyd, you can either leave, or you can start your own personal training business, work for us for eight hours, and then you can use the floor to train your clients and keep your money. So I thought, okay, I may as well do that because I've got the qualification. Why not make the most of it? So I started doing that. And I said to myself, actually, do you know what? Before I begin this, I'm going to take a little bit of time out. I'm going to take a month or two out, and I'm going to go on travel. So I decided to go to Sweden. Why did you pick Sweden? I just thought I'd just go there for a little trip away, just get away, do something different. And whilst I was in Sweden, something crazy happened. It was as if someone came behind me and shoved a knife in the back of my head. I didn't even know what it was. And later on, I realized that it was the beginning of the second episode of severe mental health. I had a massive anxiety and panic attack which led into severe insomnia, led into clinical depression, where I got suicidal, and my life just took a really downward turn. And after several months of trying to heal myself, I tried lots of different things to help. I went to the doctor, and they gave me some sleeping tablets, and things just went AWOL. I started getting side effects. So I tried other natural ways to deal with it, but I got so unwell and so suicidal, I said to myself, I need some help. So I told my parents what was going on. 
and they came with me to the surgery, the doctor's surgery, and they referred me to a more modern doctor. And immediately they said that he's not well, we need to refer him to a psychiatrist. And so they sent me through to one. And when I saw the psychiatrist, they said that I had severe anxiety and clinical depression. And they said, you need to take medication. If you don't, you'll get worse. And so I agreed, even though I didn't want to take it. So things started to get worse because I wasn't taking the medication. And when I saw the psychiatrist, they said, look, if you don't take the medication, you're going to get far worse. And then we're not going to be able to help you. And you'll end up in a mental health institute. And so I decided that I'll take it. And initially, when I started to take it, I got a lot worse. And then a month went by and I started to feel a little bit better, but I still wasn't myself. And the mental health experts came to monitor my behavior to see how I was doing. And finally, after 11 months of a lot of suffering, a lady said to me, I'm going to take you for a walk because I just want you to get out of this atmosphere that you're in at the moment. I'd like to have a chat with you outside your current environment. So for the first time in 11 months, I looked up and saw the sunshine and she said to me, Vishal, when you get through this, what are you going to do with your life? I looked her square in the eyes and I said, when I get through this, I'm going to do great things for humanity. Wow. And I really meant it. And that was the beginning of me healing from my second episode of mental health. And I then went on to start my own personal training business. And I went back to the psychiatrist and said, look, I've started. And she was so overjoyed. She had tears coming out of her eyes because she said, we didn't think you were going to come back from this. In fact, we thought you were going schizophrenic. So she was overjoyed that I'd healed and had improved so much. Started this personal training business and it was very difficult in the beginning because I didn't know how to run a business and get clients. So I was pretty broke at that point because I had no money. So I started this business and didn't have any clients to begin with. But then I started to put myself out there more and people could see that I could really help and get them results. So at that point, I started to charge and... Eventually, I got really busy after about eight to 10 months. Started working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, and my clients were loving it. But the only problem was, was I was giving so much, but my income was very average. And so at that point, I said to myself, if I keep giving this much and only receiving this much in return, I think I'm going to burn out. But I said, I have to keep going anyway, because I have to support myself and my family. And so I carried on, and... Little did I know, well, I did know, but I didn't realize it hit me so hard. I burned out, ended up in bed, not being able to work for a whole month. Physically wasn't able to take care of myself anymore. And I wasn't earning any money, so I had to take a whole month out just to stay in bed and recover. Wow. And after that month had gone by, I'd gained enough energy to take care of my basic needs, but I wasn't fit enough to work, so I wasn't able to earn any money. So I made the biggest mistake of my life at that point, And I did something I told other people not to do. It's been a hypocrite. I went and gambled because that was the only thing that I could think of doing that would help me earn some money. Not for greed reasons, but just to take care of my financial needs. Uh-huh. And the first time I went in, I won some money. Cha-ching. I thought, this is wonderful. Great. I'll do this every time. But it didn't work out that way. I ended up losing everything I had. and. I said to myself, I need some help because I'm going down a dark hole here. And I told my father and being a good father, he understood. And even though he was disappointed in me, he said to me, I have a savings account for you. And I was hoping to give you this later on in life, but there's about 650 quid in there. Hopefully that will help you out, get you on your feet again, do something with it. And I thought, okay, it's not a lot of money, but it's something. And he said, I'll give you this under one condition that you don't gamble it so what was the first thought i had andy i can kind of guess here was it gamble it yeah i'll gamble it (laughs) so i said no i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to give up these crappy chapters of my life and i'm going to start a new beginning so i booked a flight to travel from england to kenya and i said to myself i'm going to go there and work with orphan children to give them a vision of hope the night before I'm about to fly to do this charity work, my girlfriend calls me, beautiful blonde haired, blue eyed girl. She was Swedish. And I met 
her in Sweden when I said to you I went over there. Uh huh. Fell madly in love, and she said, "You know, Michelle, I want to tell you something. When I first met you, I decided." that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you and have kids with you and grow old and wrinkly with you. I made a fast decision because I just fell in love with you. But I understood and I've understood over the years that I don't think you're ever going to want the same things I do. And I went along with it for a few years, but now I've got to a point where I've decided I do want those things. And so I have decided I'm moving along and I don't want to be with you anymore. This is the night before you fly to Africa? To do this charity work, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I was thinking, life, come on now, give me a break, give me something. And so I went and did this charity work, felt great on one hand, but completely depressed and lost and confused and broke on the other hand. So I came back and I said, I need to change, really change my life and do something practical. So I went to a big business seminar where Richard Branson, Lord Alan Sugar, James Kahn were the featured speakers. And... A man comes out and says, you need to write a book to brand yourself. I said, oh my God, this guy's brilliant. He's so funny, so clever. And I've always wanted to write a book. I need to do it. So I went to enroll and register. But the problem was I didn't have any money. So motivated, but I didn't have any money. So I basically said, I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm going to find the money. So I rang around, found some money, invested in myself. And from that moment onwards, my life took a completely different path wrote my first book, started to get more clients for my personal training business because I restarted then. Things were improving. And then I said, I want, I want to change my career. I want, to, I want to actually speak professionally. And so I learned from this man who taught me how to write a book and I started to learn things that I never knew that I could do. And it was so powerful. And so I had this amazing career that I started to develop traveling around the world, helping people with writing the books. And I was just living the dream but then whilst i was teaching one day something hit me and i questioned and doubted myself so much that i had this major anxiety and panic attack and i didn't know what was going on but i sensed something wasn't right and so that led me down this path of my third severe mental health episode and it took me a long time to accept once again that I needed help but it got so bad that I ended up in three different mental health institutes and in two different countries and I just went down a really downward spiral anyway it took me a long time to recover eventually getting out of the mental health institutes I decided to start my own company called Wow Book Camp and I've been ever since February this year I've been traveling around the world under my own brand, helping entrepreneurs and professionals improve the quality of their lives through branding and writing their own books. What countries have you been to, Vishal? I have been to Albania three times. I've been to Paris, been to Belgium, all across the UK. I went to Guadeloupe in the Caribbean four times this year. I was in the US three times this year, New York and South Florida. I was in Canada. So yeah, they're the main country. That's incredible. I did say you was an international speaker. I wasn't exaggerating, was I? <laughs> yeah, it's been great. So yeah, that was a slightly longer version of my life story and my background than I thought I was going to tell you, but there you go. It's a brilliant story. The third bout of mental illness, was that completely out of the blue or did you have something within your life that was bringing it upon you? Well, I guess it was more just questioning myself and doubting myself whether I'm on the right track or not and I think something wasn't right and things needed to change and I think not I think I know the reason why it now happened was that I needed to spread my own wings I needed to start building my own brand and doing the doing things the way that I know work for me and the way that I actually work rather than doing it someone else's way There's nothing wrong in having coaches and mentors. In fact, they're crucial to your success. But the key is is to not be living in their shadows. At some point, you have to spread your wings and you have to do your own thing and do things the way that you've learned, but also the way that you are. And so I realized that that's one of the major learning lessons from my third episode of mental health, that I needed to do my own things my own way. Who trains and inspires you nowadays? You obviously train others, but who does that for you? Well, I just look around at anyone and anything that is doing well. And I use that to help me succeed. And I, and I learn from other speakers and other coaches and mentors. And 
some of the great people that have really inspired me and really changed my life from the the beginning. The likes of Les Brown, he was a big, big influence. I love Jack Canfield. Uh huh. He was really good. In fact, I got to meet Jack and I interviewed him and became almost like a friend of his. And I had a conversation with him a couple of months ago, and he's written the foreword and has given him a testimonial for my latest book that's just been released and will be launched in the new year called Master Your Wow, Discover the Real Secret of the Rich. And so, yeah, he was a big inspiration. And the guy who helped me with my professional speaking, my book, Raymond Aaron, he helped me with, with quite a few things in, at the beginning of my professional speaking career. And there's been lots of people that I've met that have inspired me and motivated me to do to do better things with my life. And I'm very grateful to to them for crossing paths. Do you know what? What we were saying earlier that you were a physical trainer, but when your health fell down, it was your mental health. So I've been saying on previous podcasts that the most important health within your body is within your mind. That's illustrated it because everything fell to bits and you talking earlier about gambling issues we had a guest on the show Tony Kelly that started a gambling addiction charity called Red Card and he lost £500,000 to gambling he was a pro footballer and it affected his mental health too he finished his career £198,000 in debt so I try and help people wherever possible to be mentally healthy and physical health can follow on from there on in well, there's that saying that without your health, there is no wealth. And I think health, and not just in the physical, but the mental health sense as well. Mental health is a big thing at the moment. It's huge. It's growing because more and more people are suffering from it. There's not such a big taboo anymore. People are really opening up about their lives and celebrities and ordinary people and business people, all sorts of people go through it. It's just at different levels. And I think it's important to have a balance in life. And I'm guilty of that. Sometimes so focused on work and business, I forget to take care of my health. But the truth is, is that if you don't take care of your health, don't take care of your relationship, don't take care of your finances, don't take care of the things that you love to do, don't take care of of taking some time out in life, then at some point there is going to be things in life that happen that come to teach you a lesson. I think it's very important that you take some time out to look at different areas of your life and spend some time improving each of those areas. I'm hoping to get some people onto the podcast to talk about mental health and having people like yourself on can only help. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Do you still keep fit nowadays? What, what do you do to stay fit? So I, I've actually neglected my physical health in terms of practically going out and training in the gym. But what I have done my best to do is to engage in sporting activities because I really do enjoy playing sports. So I, I still play a little bit of football and a little bit of basketball, not as much as I used to, but I still do still do, do that. In fact, when I finish here with you on the podcast, I have a short meeting and then I go to play basketball. So I do my best to do to do to actually take care of my physical health but i could do better and that's the open and honest truth yes me too one thing i can say and is that i'm very fortunate in the sense that because for so many years of my life i did train myself very hard and i pushed myself way beyond my limits it's actually helping me now that i've not been training as much but that can only support me for so long i need to get back into a a routine of doing some physical exercise on a regular basis for sure what do you think your biggest achievement is to date wow there's there's so many in fact i was having a conversation with my friend the other day and he was saying the things you've been through in your life and the things you've achieved up until this point are so huge that most people wouldn't do that in their whole lifetime and i thought that's so true but what would i pinpoint as one of the biggest achievements of my life I think the biggest achievement that I have made is creating my WOW book camp and taking it all around the world within the first year and making over six figures. I would say that's the biggest achievement for me. 
that's an absolutely massive achievement well done i was tempted to say in my charity where i work with orphan children to give them a vision of hope which is big but when i look at this achievement i think that one's bigger in my eyes because that allows me to give back more to charity so if i could say one i'd say that one i think you're right could you tell me a personal story of a person that you've helped maybe an emotional side of what you do yeah absolutely I have a saying actually that says your wealth is determined by the number of people that you have helped throughout your life. There are so many people that I've helped and sometimes I forget, but one recent one that really sprung to mind was I did a recent WOW book camp of mine, which is where I help entrepreneurs, professors write their own book within three days and uses the business card. One of my clients came to that and he just said, I, I want to come to give a testimonial to your new authors. And so I said, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. You're welcome to do that. And so he came along and I had no idea what he was going to say. And so I thought, let me, let me have the conversation. Let's get him up and he can talk about what he feels he wants to talk about for a few minutes. And so I said, let's Facebook Live it too. It turned into a little bit of an interview but then when I gave him a few minutes just to say what he wanted, he said that what I've helped him with has not only helped him with his book, but it's helped him completely change his life. What he did was he took on this lesson called FTA, which is fastest to act. The individual that is fastest to act and that implements what they've learned in the fastest way possible will get results than someone who waits for things to be perfect and then acts because that never happens. It's where procrastination comes in. And so what he did is use this example and this lesson of FTA, fastest to act, and he started recording something which was related to his profession but also his hobby. So he's a pharmacist and he prescribes digital prescription and he's also a crumper which is a form of dance. And so he thought of combining the two and he thought of doing a project and he was on the verge of starting a new course. But he said, do you know what? I'm not going to wait until I have all the perfect things. I'm just going to use this principle of FTA. And so he got the basic camera he had, used some natural apparatus around the home instead of waiting for everything to come. And he just recorded his first video. He put it out there. And then something amazing happened that he did not expect. And I had no idea about this. Put this video out there and he thought, oh, maybe he's just going to have a few people from a certain community that are going to want to work with him. He launched this course on Udemy and within a few weeks, he had over 500 people from 60 odd countries enroll in his program. Wow. It was just unbelievable. And then a month later, he had over 900 people from 90-odd countries enroll in his, in his course. And he was just taken aback. And he said, the reason why that happened was because I taught him this principle of FTA. Vishal, tell us a little bit more about your courses and how you teach people to write books and then use it as their business card. So I've had a lot of people, Andy, ask me about how I do what I do and how did I create this business and how did I turn it into a six-figure business within less than a year? Actually, it took me about six months to get it to six figures. So I said, you know what? This is great that people are asking me this. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create my one-day event called Six Figure Business Summit. And at this Six Figure Business Summit, I'm not only going to teach how I created my six-figure business, but I'm also going to launch my latest book, Master Your Wow. Is this your latest project then? So this is one of my latest projects that I've created, and it's one day where you get to come along and you get to learn from me how you create your own six-figure business in a very short period of time and do it in a way in which you love the whole process. And so I'm doing this in January. I'm doing it in Leicester and in London. I'm doing one on January 27th, which I think is a Saturday, and on January 28th, which is a Sunday in London. And people can come along, and it's only as little as 27 quid to land for the whole day. Wow. I'm going to say wow. <laughs> so if you're listening and you want to come along and learn from me, then go to Six Figure Business Summit 
dot com. That's six figure business summit dot com and it's the number six. So six figure business summit dot com. And you can come and see you and do a day's training for twenty seven pounds. That'll just cover the cost of the event, won't it? Yeah, it's a bargain. Yeah, well, the number of people I get, it will cover the cost of the venue for sure. Because there's going to be 50 to 100 powerful business leaders and professionals there. So it will also be a good opportunity to network with some of those. Is that the best way for people to contact you, Vishal? Or is there other methods on social media? So they're welcome to find me on social media, Vishal Majaria. Just type in Vishal Majaria, which is V-I-S-H-A-L. And then Mojari is M-O-R-J-A-R-I-A. And I'm sure Andy will have my name correctly spelled on this podcast. So you can just look me up. I will. And we'll put the stuff in the show notes too for people to contact you at all the places you've mentioned. Amazing. Thank you for having me, Andy. I appreciate you. No, your story is a fantastic story, Vishal, and it's particularly fitting that you've come back from suffering mental health to get yourself into the top 1% of earners in the UK. Well done, and thank you for inspiring us. Thank you, and I just want you to know, Andy, I'm not perfect. I, I do my best to be a good human being, but of course, from time to time, I, there's learning lessons for me as well, and I think that's the beauty of life, is that life is here for you and I to learn so that we can truly grow and that you can truly be the best version of yourself. So thank you for having me. No, that's inspiring. Thank you, Vishal. You're welcome on the show anytime. Thank you so much. Now, I've trained plenty of people in my time. I've even been asked to train people from Coca-Cola and Glaxo's. But I've set myself a goal and in 2018, I'm going to train over 100 people to improve their wealth and health. So if you'd like to be considered, it's personal training. I'm going to put it out there for application only. So I'm going to be doing this training initially at my home. So I'm going to have small teams of people. I'm going to work upon everything that you need for small businesses and also for online sales. And we have some people that are specialists that's going to come along and help us. If you'd also like to improve your health, we've got a program that's quite intensive it's going to mean you putting tremendous effort in. But if you want to improve, I'm going to be able to help you. So please contact me on transformyourwealthandhealth at gmail.com or 07 903 771 594. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And until next time, start transforming your wealth and health now.